you know, this is very tender, you know, this morning, uh, these poems were still written in caps on the backs of envelopes of bills to the utility company, okay? She kept the originals, but these have been transcribed for, so that I could actually make them out a little bit better. Um, the first one, as you know, uh, flowers were uh, important to the norm. Uh, yeah, and so this one sort of flourish. Outside my window, rain falls tender to the earth. Its love fills the air. Sweet honey mist of greed replete. I hear the little seeds swelling in satisfaction until they burst, freeing their changeling hearts to reach upward toward the sky and bloom in passing glory. I'm already grateful. A memory of future beauty soothes my spirit, fills my eye. Before I read the next two, I have to tell you about a conversation I had with Lisa early this morning. She told me, I don't know if it was exactly Lenore's last two days, but it was very close to her last two days. And Lisa went to see her. Uh, I think Lisa said, Lenore, are you dying today? And Lenore said, no, soon, but not today. And so they sat together and watched the sky. And that was made possible by the fact that the hospital folks, once that Lenore's imminent death was accepted, um, they accommodated her by turning her bed and putting it up at, at such an angle that she could actually see out through the windows. I guess she was on a pretty high floor because she could see all the way across the city and to the um, Rainbow Tunnel in Marin, if you can believe that, St. Elvis Spires, St. Peter and Paul and the whole everything. And, and she was very blessed in those days because her favorite thing, of course, was the stars. She was able to see the stars and enjoy the stars. And Lisa and, and she sat together and in silence and enjoyed that beautiful view and for the first two nights that they did that, there was no fog if you could believe that. That's a blessing in itself. And I guess then, at some point, uh, Lisa was sitting there and she told me the fog began to creep in and it nestled all around the base of the spires of Saints Peter and Paul. And the blue light they have in that church suffused the fog with this indigo glow under the stars, which was just uh, such a perfect thing to be looking at together, and they really enjoyed that. And uh, Lisa said she found many places in Lenore's papers after she passed this quote. Um, please forgive me, I can't really, even though I've consulted a couple people about how to pronounce this, I, I probably won't say the town name correct, but it was one of Lenore's favorites. Just as we take the train to Rouen, we take the death to reach the stars. And Van Gogh said that. And Nor said, a place to stand. Air itself is light, sweet morning in a bridal veil, all possibility inherent in each breath. I cast my mind out to the vast beyond as it were a lariat, or else a fishing line. I troll for enlightenment, for epiphany. I troll for grace, for a warm touch among the chiming stars. And the last one, there is someone who loves me to the east of me, to the west, someone who loves me to the north, to the south. There is someone I have loved in all directions that there are. I will come back as a late spring wind dressed in cherry blossoms I will kiss everyone on the lips. When I have passed, they will smile a little. I was born in a star heart, time past reckoning. Maybe I will become light. Maybe, maybe so.